Well, this is a panel raising plane, probably early 19th century, uh, maybe late 18th century, made by a guy named Tabor in New Bedford, Mass. Uh, I got it years ago. I traded it for a, a bronze router plane. I had that I didn't like. And uh, I've been using it a lot to make a lot of panels over the years. It's great because it makes a panel that tapers down to the point where the edges are almost parallel. And so when you make the, the field with this plane, this is a very nice, clean edge here. So the panel has room to expand and contract, and it won't open up a gap. Um, it's nice because it will adjust the width of the panel. I think I can go to about a two inch field. Um, and if I'm doing something smaller, I can move, move the fence over and get a smaller field. Um, it's really well made. It doesn't clog up. It's, uh, it's just a single blade with no cap iron, but the steel is really good. Uh, the only thing that you have to accommodate with this is if you're running across end grain, you've got to slit the end grain because there is no knicker on it to cut the end grain. Now, I could put one in, but I didn't really want to change the, change the uh, plane. You can even see the layout marks where he made this plane. You can see the throat layout here. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see how it was made. So I've used that a lot. It makes a great panel and it's really easy to use. Um, just a nice plane is probably the most valuable plane I own as far as collectors go. But I use it all the time. This is a toothing plane. It's uh, typical of having the iron almost 90 degrees to the work. And what it really does is just scrape a bunch of little grooves in the wood. And this is used prior to uh, using hide glue to glue something down. So if you look under old work, if you peel up old veneer, you'll see the crisscross marks of a toothing plane, which gave a little bit more gluing surface. And I think it also allowed the glue to squeeze out easier when you're hammer veneering uh, the veneer down. And so it's just used uh, diagonally, usually crisscross across the surface and then a couple of long runs. Um, so it's a very easy plane to use. You can sharpen it like a regular blade. Uh, and um, it's specifically used just to ground stuff under veneer. They also use them to prep very curly woods. If stuff had crotches or really fancy wood, you could get it down, smooth it with this without taking chunks out of it, and then go straight to a scraper. So sometimes on underneath of uh, fancy table leaves where, they're, where it's a very fancy wood, you will see toothing plane marks where they just cleaned up the bottom of the table. Whereas if you used a regular plane, you would take big chunks out if it was curly wood. So that's another use for it, but mostly it's used under veneer. This is a plane that I made uh, when I worked on some furniture for uh, Brock Job's New England furniture book in the 80s. And I had to make a copy of a 17th century chest. It had this channel mold in it. And the only way to make it right was to make a plane similar to the one they would have used in the 17th century. And so I made this uh, plane. It's got a fence. It just fits, press fit these arms. And I hammer it in and out to adjust it. It's, uh, the blade is an old Stanley 55 blade, repurposed, reground. Um, they have good steel, and it was wide enough, so I used that. Uh, very simple to use. I just adjust the uh, fence in from the edge and uh, run it, and it, it works great. It leaves a nice, uh, nice period channel mold. Uh, doesn't clog up. I got lucky. Sometimes you do. Um, I don't use it much anymore, but it's a great period plane to exactly reproduce this molding. This is a Stanley 45 um, dado plane, and I use it primarily for making the dados for drawer bottoms. It's a, it's a pretty early one. It has these floral decorations in the casting. It's a really cool looking plane. Um, easy to use, doesn't clog up. I have a set of cutters that I use with it, and so these are this is an assortment of cutters from 55s and 45s, and so I have a a choice of how wide I can make my dado, but it works great, um, easy to hold on to. I bought it from a, an old Swedish guy who had a wood shop that burnt down years ago. This still has a scorched handle, and uh, the front half of the knob is burnt off, <laughs> but it doesn't seem to matter. It still works great, and uh, if you want to, you can add a, a wood fence onto the steel fence, uh, but I don't usually have to do that, and, uh, and so I just use it to to plow these grooves and it's really fast and easy to adjust, works great. This is a brand new uh, Veritas skew rabbit plane given to me by a student, Joe Earhart. 
who uh, loved the class so much, he, uh, he decided I should have the plane, which is really nice of him. It's a very expensive plane. Uh, this is a great plane. It's adjustable in a million different ways. It's really easy to adjust the knicker. It's really easy to adjust the blade. There are two screws that will keep the blade aligned, which is a real pain in the neck with rabbit planes. Uh, it's comfortable, it makes sense, and it's, it's great. Uh, I love it. Um, I used to use, and still use sometimes, this, the uh, old skew rabbit planes. These things work great too. There's the knicker, uh, the blade, the depth stop, and uh, fence here to adjust the width of your rabbit. So they'll both do the same thing. Uh, this is simpler, uh, a little harder to adjust. This one is great because everything is very easy to adjust and it works really well. So two planes that do the same thing, one modern adaptation, one old one. This skunk plane is really just a small plane and uh, I use it to get in places where a big plane won't fit. For instance, on this tabletop, I've got to work in and clean out the, the flat part of the table between the molding and in order to get in there. I use a, a little plane to smooth off my marks from the router or whoever I took it down. And then I'll go to um, a scraper after that. So this skunk plane's great because it's a tiny plane, but it's got this tail on it, which makes it easier to hold. And so you can hold it like this, put your finger on the top and use it as you would, you know, just a regular plane. So I go across the grain here in order not to uh, take any chunks out of it. So that's what that plane, I use it rarely, but I use it specifically for that. The blade is ground fairly round so that I, uh, I don't nick the corners and it, it will take a very shallow cut, but it's, uh, it's made to take a whole bunch of parallel cuts and it'll average out to being very smooth. But the, the corners of the blade are ground back pretty aggressively just to make sure they don't dig in. This is a Chippendale leg molding plane, uh, makes a typical molding that you see on tables, chairs, once in a while. Uh, I made it specifically for uh, a reproduction job that I did uh, for another museum exhibit. Um, this one was to copy of Portsmouth, a Robert Harrell tea table leg. So it's great because it will, in one fell swoop, it'll make the, uh, the entire molding across the width of the leg and um, works kind of okay, not great, but uh, I make it work. And um, it leaves a really beautiful finish. You know, once you, once you make a molding with something like this, it's really, it comes out super smooth. Um, and so you don't have to mess with it after that. But it's sized for an inch and a half leg, so it'll just do inch and a half legs, that's it. Um, but um, this is how they did it. Uh, in the old days for those tables, they just had a specific plane that would do it. And uh, so I made it for that job. Is there any special story about this one? No, I don't even remember where I got this one. Sorry, I could make something up. No, <laughs>